Today, kiddos, we're going to the best theme park in the Isle of Midwest. Wait, Worlds of Fun? Yup. I was honestly wondering where we were driving. Wow. Wow, we're driving there. Before the madness of the theme park, we decided it was a good idea to eat some lunch, AKA some big thick burritos. Uh. Then we arrived to the theme park. Yeah. Come along with us. I actually did some Googling and this is the largest, largest theme park in the Midwest of the United States. Now you could say that's not that big of a, of a accomplishment, but I feel like it's a pretty big accomplishment. I think it for sure is. Worlds of Fun actually opened in 1973 and it was created by Lamar Hunt and Jack Steadman. In 1995, they sold the park to Cedar Fair. And if you don't know what that is, they own so many amusement parks, like Knott's Berry Farm, Valley Fair in Minnesota, some Wonderland in Canada, and so many others that we aren't aware of. I've never been this happy. We've been going to this theme park since we were kids, but it was a couple of days ago that I learned what the theme park actually is like themed off of. I just thought like, oh, worlds of fun. It's a world of fun. But it's actually way deeper than that. Worlds of fun is based off a book called Around the World in 80 Days. Have you heard of this? It sounds familiar. Um, it didn't sound familiar to me, but it's about English man who lives a solitary life in London, and he's part of this reform club. But then this railway opens in India that makes it possible to travel the whole entire world in 80 days. So then the whole entire reform club makes a butt and they're like, do it. And he does it with his newly hired valet. A valet is like a male personal attendant, I guess. And they travel the world in 80 days. Whoa. Worlds of Fun is based off that because they have a bunch of different continents at Worlds of Fun. And essentially you can travel the whole entire world in one day while you're in Kansas City, Missouri. Honestly, magical when you think about it. You don't even need to leave the Midwest. You can just see the whole world. That's what I love Midwest. about Worlds of Fun. Like I'm not gonna actually travel to any of these other continents cause I can just go to down to Kansas City and experience it all there, you know? I did some Googling on this novel and I tried to find out what the characters look like because I'm pretty sure this novel has been like made into movies several times. And I still don't understand why Worlds of Fun has these like kings and queens and this little like circus thing. But I'm just gonna say they have it because Worlds of Fun is also kind of like a carnival, so. Um, My personal theory is that they added these weird like castle things when it was bought in 1995. So like, I'll just throw some theme park stuff in there. You know, they didn't like fit to the original theme. I totally agree with that statement. Right after walking in, we ran into a sign that said the Mamba was closed. If you've never been to Woods of Fun, the Mamba is a revolutionary roller coaster that everyone looks forward to. You literally see it from the inner state and you're like, wow. We actually saw it run a few times and it had little dummies in each seat. The Mamba is like the crown jewel of the park and we couldn't even experience it. Ride one, Grand Carousel. This might just look like your average merry-go-round, but it's actually one of the most valuable carousels in the world. It's actually one of five. It did kind of give haunted vibes and now it makes sense. Yeah, cause it's been around so long. It's like the early 1900s, right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, to me it was a five out of five for the first ride to go on once you get to an amusement park. This ride was fun to me. Ride number two, the spinning dragons. This is a spinning roller coaster if you haven't already realized from the title of the roller coaster. I think this is also sort of like an in-between adult and kid roller coaster. It's not like a toddler ride, but it's not an, it's like, isn't it for like the, the, your first roller coaster you can go on? But um, 
the line was way too long and the people in front of us in line walked out of line and were like, yeah, F this. So they kind of brought the whole mood down. So we were like, yeah, we aren't waiting in line either. Ride three, the Patriot. This is an inverted roller coaster. I didn't really know what that meant, but this is like what an inverted roller coaster is. Like where your legs hang out. When we were at Worlds of Fun, I kept saying like, how much did this cost? How much did this cost? And I guess this roller coaster costed 14 million. So that's a good what insight into how much these cost. That is actually so much. I was not expecting that. Even though we said the Mambo was like the main attraction, I feel like the Patriot, since it's, it's like the newest one in town. So it's kind of the new crown jewel in a way. We actually couldn't go on it because... <laughs> the roller coaster like didn't walk. Didn't you say you overheard the people walking saying like the exit didn't close or something? Yeah, they were trying to close the exit door and then it was also funny because like you seemed so stressed because your thing wasn't shutting. Yeah, on these roller coasters, <laughs> they so you sit on the seat probably for two minutes before the ride actually starts and they don't lock the thing. And then I'm like, but what if they stop the roller coaster when my thing isn't locked? And with this ride, I was actually scared because if this thing isn't locked, like I'm actually gonna die. Whereas well, like on these, on other roller coasters, if you're not locked and you're probably gonna be fine. But this one, I was kind of like, okay, like I'm probably gonna die. This is kind of scary. And if you have noticed, I wasn't on the ride because um, even though Jacob invited me, I did let him know, like I'm probably gonna have to go on anything. I used to be a roller coaster person back in the day, but I'm just not anymore. When I was a kid, I always wondered like, why do like um, moms and dads never go on roller coasters or anything? And I guess now I'm part of that group. Yo, even though, mom and dad. Even though I don't have kids, like, yeah, I just now like, I'm more of like the guardian. Ride four, the detonator. This is like that scaly ass ride that goes up and down and it makes your stomach tickled. I am terrified of this ride because <laughs> I heard of someone dying on it. See, this is why I don't go on rides anymore because I feel like when I was a kid, I'd never heard any of these stories. But now like, I feel like we hear too much about all the bad shit happening. <laughs> None of us went on it, but later the next day, Ethan went on it. Uh-huh. Three, two, one. Oh, I'm too early. Oh, no. Yeah, I was actually surprised. Even Ethan was scared the first day. I was like, girl. Even though like I didn't go on anything, I was still judging. Finally, he got the courage. How was it, Ethan? That was fun. That was great. That was tremendous. There's a whole part of What's of Fun that's called Snoopy Land. It's for little kids. Nonetheless, even though we aren't little kids, we explored Snoopy Land. We wanted to see what was up. I remember loving Snoopy Land as a kid. Like Snoopy Land was my Disneyland, you know? Ride five, Cosmic Coastal. Coastal. Basically, I was like, Lucas, you need to go on some ride. Go on this with me. And he agreed, but then once we were starting to walk in line, we realized that this ride was broken. Yeah, a guy said, oh, no one go on line, it's broken. Then we noticed like a mom was like in the front cart and it was like not, it was like on the trail, but it didn't start. But then the worker just like used his hand and pushed the roller coaster onto the rail. Cause it, it's not like a real roller coaster. It's literally like, two feet tall. It's like one of those fake ones that's at county fairs. So yeah, we couldn't go on it basically. Is the end of the story? Yeah. Throwback time. Who remembers the pillow pet? It's a pillow, but also a pet. It's a pillow, now it's a pet. It's a pillow oh, pet. pet. Oh, <laughs> I love all those slogans because they actually get stuck in your mind. I know, like I'll forever remember that. Ride number six. Snoopy Rocket Express. This was a little kid's roller coaster, and the best thing about it was when the little rocket went on the trip on the trail, it made like this bomb noise. <laughs> And it actually like, kind of scared me. I know at first I was like, oh, like is there violence going on? But no, it was just the little Snoopy Rocket Express. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be now. Woo! You guys look like you're having so much fun on it. Yeah, I mean, it was really slow, but it was fun being above everyone. It gave me a look inside the top one plus under the wall. Wow, that's crazy. This is crazy. I'm so happy I didn't go on this one. Woo! Right, seven, this is a wooden roller coaster that opened in 1989. I was surprised when I learned that it opened in 1989. I thought it would have opened earlier. I wish it would have opened earlier. 
Yeah, you know, I actually always had the. I always thought it was from like the 1920s or something. I just wish it would have been open in like 1970 because oh, it makes yeah. it scale yo to me. Because then I th then I think when I'm on the ride, like this is the time that's gonna break down. And obviously I don't want to die, but like it just is like extra thrilling of being like, is the wood gonna rot today? Extreme vibrations and roughness are the nature of this ride. Do not be alarmed. So that animal is what a timber wolf is. I just oh, found yeah. that out today. This is actually the very first roller coaster I've ever been on in my life. I remember bawling my eyes out after. Cause I was just so scared the whole time. I didn't have fun at all. Cause I was like eight. My favorite roller coasters are wooden roller coasters. I just love how jankity they are. I don't care yeah. if they don't go upside down. I just like how you just go side to side and just like you feel like it's gonna break in the yeah. And I just wonder like how does this wood even support us? It just adds to the whole entire roller roller coaster because I feel like the reason why people go on roller coasters is to literally just shit your pants and I was shitting my pants thinking like it's gonna break. I like wooden roller coasters too. Oh my gosh. I am worried for them. This isn't gonna be good. I went out the chicken exit. Oh yeah! I was so, I was honestly, I'm so embarrassed everyone looking at me go out it. Yeah, I'm gonna say, back, 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 back. Little, little bitch ass. Back, 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 back. <laughs> five out of five roller coaster. If you're the engineer that made this roller coaster, thank you. Jesus is thanking you today. As we said earlier, it was hot as F on this day, so I appreciated that they had water mistles. Although I did create a conspiracy theory that they put chemicals in the water mistles. <laughs> I don't believe that. I just think it's always fun, like, making up fail-mongering stuff. Even when I'm so sweaty, I still don't want to go under misters for some reason. You get all wet, you know? I love being wet. Ride eight. Monsoon. This is a 20 passenger boat ride that goes up 55 feet, then falls down. Creating a monsoon in the process that smashes not only the passengers, but a bunch of adoring fans on the balcony above. That's the thing about this ride, is that you have to make sure you're wearing your best outfit, because there's a whole group of 20 people, maybe even more sometimes, looking at you. I know, audience. We sat in the back because our little brother told us like, this is, this is like the craziest part, guys. Like, you're gonna get what? And like, we did get what? Ethan, look at the camera. Look at the camera. Ah! Ah! Oh, oh, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> Yeah, it was great. It reminds me of the Jurassic Park ride at Universal Studios. Giant thing at the end. That's something you like drop so straight down on a water ride. Oh, and I always wonder like, how do people die in these? But you know, we didn't die, so I'm thankful. And like, you never know if you're sitting in pee cause like there's just all these puddles of water everywhere. And like, yeah. We never showed them in the video, so you won't ever, you won't ever see these people. But we, there's this group of friends in this boat with us. And somehow for the rest of the day, we went on every single ride that they went on. We were, didn't even plan it. Well, I didn't notice this, but then you and Ethan were like, yeah, what is like, we've seen them so many times and, the, and that stuff like that's just whale. I know, we literally obviously weren't just following them. We just it happened that every single ride we went on, they were there and it's like, what's going on, you know? yup -o. But five out of five. You already say that. No, I don't think we have. Yeah, it was a five out of five. Ride nine, the back. I did want to do a professional lucrative bathroom review. I'm joking, why would it be lucrative? I didn't because I decided I'll follow the world of fun policies. There was a sign that said like, no video recording in the bathroom. Ew, they had to put a sign of that? <laughs> I know, that's what is kind of funny because yeah, I just never see that by a bathroom. So I thought I it guess, was kind of funny. I guess all public I mean, bathrooms would don't. need that. Cause like nowadays it's Snapchat and stuff, you know someone's like doing a TikTok in there and it's like, well maybe don't do that cause someone's pissing behind you, you know? I found a photo on Google of what this bathroom was like. So yeah, it was like a three out of five bathroom. Yeah, they're always like run down, but in a good way. Not run down, there's like, there's basic, what they're supposed to be, you know? Just take back everything I said, I don't want to insult their bathrooms. Ride 10, Fury of the Nile. This is a raft river ride that opened in 1983. It's not actually in a river, it's in a man-made river. No, that's a real river. I don't think so. 
Yeah. Obviously, this video isn't to dig into why Lucas went didn't go on the rides, but I was thinking like, why didn't you go? Why did you go on the scale yas drop down ride, but not this ride? This ride. <laughs> no, actually didn't make sense. But yeah, I actually um got a pretty good vantage point watching you guys go down the little river, and you didn't even know I was filming. So this is how Jacob and Ethan act when they don't know they're on camera. I was filming with a GoPro though, so I guess that's not an accurate depiction. That's true. You I was no still like idea. putting on like my little fake. You had Chucky no face. idea. Me and Ethan were kind of annoyed because we wanted to sit by ourselves because it wasn't busy that day. So we thought like, we're being a little bit selfish by like sitting in one by ourselves, but let's try to do it. But then they sat us with this family and we were like, bitch, we don't want to sit by a family. I know that you just can't even be yourself. I know. And it's like, I know they're just like, they look at me. I'm like, joking. I hate they them. They, they, hate they them. were nice. I hated them. <laughs> That's why I didn't go on the ride. The ride was fun and again like, I was also a little bit scared because I heard someone died on one of these before. I know, that's it. Everyone's done on every ride. Yeah, see, I guess you can't I don't can't know why really... I said that with a smile, but like, just like, interesting. Uh, yeah, um, this ride was like a 4 out of 10. I did get what? Again. Oh my god, two wet rides back to back. Yeah, I felt like I was at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards and it was just like, slimed, slimed, slimed. I like Worlds of Fun. We have to dig into the water situation. Have you noticed that all these water rides have this gross, green, dark pigmented water? <laughs> and Lucas came up with the assumption that they probably just dye it green so that it looks like it's actually a river, which I yeah. kind of actually subscribe to that. I think they dye it green because it's better being green than brown. Which would be what it would be if it wasn't dyed, because dirt would go in it, just turn into a little brown. And they probably brown. don't clean it. Like they clean it once a season, which over a season it probably gets dirty as. You no, know, I almost fuck. think green's even better than clear water. Then you see the bottom of like the ride, but green, it's like it's just a little green thing. And most rivers probably would be green. Yes, I actually I like that they put green food coloring in it. So I guess it's not really gross. It's more just like. Oh, ride eleven, boomerang. It's called Wards of Fun, but there's not an Australia section, and I guess this part could be seen as the Australian section. I guess boomerangs. Yeah. This is a clone ride. It's not unique to Wards of Fun. I've actually been on this exact same ride at Knott's Berry Farm. Do you want, want to know like a little trivia thing? Why is it called a boomerang? Why is on the roller coaster called boomerang? Um, oh, I know like a boomerang comes back to you, so I guess maybe it, it starts on the same side so it comes back. Oh, and it goes back to you like a boomerang. Yeah. I'm gonna throw it back like a boomerang. Nee, nee, nee. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. This is just one of those rides where you just get fucked up and your neck's moving everywhere and you don't even remember going upside down because it's so quick. But nonetheless, I would go on it again. Yeah. It just seems like you just get banged around, which is surprising because it's not a wooden roller coaster. What was it like? For sure the scariest roller coaster. I hurt my head a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> ride 12. Scrambler. This is this is from Woods of Fun website. Guess swirl, twirl, and spin around on this fast-paced circular ride. I love a good scrambler. These are just a classic at every little fair. Yeah, we've all seen them. They do the little spins. They make you kind of want to vomit. I it's love them. Fun. I think that's where I thrive is like the little spin rides. Then you always end up squishing someone. Oh yeah. You're just going. Rrr. The scrambler felt like I was an egg being scrambled. <laughs> I did like a three out of five. For me, it'd be like, yeah, four out of five. Because I think it would be cooler if like it did this while it's been. Oh, like a like an up and down motion? Yeah, they actually had that there. We just didn't go on it. I want to mention this in the video. I thought I found a secret passageway that led to like something that I didn't know about, but it actually led to just like another part of the theme park. You know in these books, like they always open a book and like they get in this magical world. So I was like, like Narnia. Earth can be magical, but I feel like it's not magical enough for me. So I was like, maybe this will be the moment where I'm transported to the magic land, but oh, yeah. it wasn't. Little Marshmallow Land. Marshmallow Land, Marshmallow Land, Marshmallow Land is where you can be yourself. Marshmallow Land, Marshmallow Land. Ride 14. Another classic carnival ride. Boat 
goes up, down, up, down. <laughs> yeah, just a swinging bow. We thought it was funny because while we were in line, we realized how these work. It's literally just a tile at the bottom. I mean, for some reason, that was funny. Like, it makes sense, but it just seems so random. Yeah, I just thought it was more advanced than that. For some reason, seeing a tile, I was like, this is the most simplest shit. I feel I could just make these guys. So basically, they get a little <laughs> Kia Nissan. That's not even a car. They get a ne they get a little Kia Rio, flip it upside down and put it in a hole. Somebody goes upside down in the car, presses the gas up now to make it go faster. They have a walkie-talkie in the walk goes, Yeah, they say, okay, hit the brake. <laughs> yeah. While we were in line for this ride, we saw another little pond of green water. We, we noticed that this pond was littered with last opportunities, like a stuffed animal. Animal. That stuffed animal could have became your friend. Last opportunity. There were cups, there were water bottles. It was just the pond of broken dreams. Isn't it actually kind of funny that like, we can't have anything nice as a society. Like why do people even litter in there? Like boo boo, why are you throwing shit in the pond while you're in line? You know what I mean? There's <laughs> trash cans all over the park. There's no excuse. Yeah, I think it's honestly just out of boredom. <laughs> Lucas didn't go on this ride, even though he said he maybe was, but then he didn't. Uh-uh. I was just the filmer again. I swear it goes higher than usual. When I was a kid, it didn't used to go this high. <laughs> <laughs> five out of five. I love getting some tickles. Yeah. Ride 14. Prowler. This is the second and last wooden roller coaster at Wards of Fun and it opened in 2009. This costed 8 million to um, produce or make. I wonder if the main cost is designing it and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it kind of makes sense that they're so expensive because you have so many people's lives on your hands. So, like, oh, yeah, probably like it. safety protocols alone, like, is like half a million somehow because you have I to forgot. have like all these buckles come or some shit. That is true. I wonder how much the actual cost of the materials and labor to make a roller coaster is. Like two million? We whacked packs this roller coaster only on the day and it was closed, but then it was open. And didn't they say like it was gonna be closed for a week? One of the workers? Something like that, but then it just opened magically. Oh yeah, they were like, oh, I guess we learned how to screw together like the bolts or whatever, so. Uh -oh. This roller coaster just actually is like the most effed up roller coaster. It just is like boom. You're just doing everything at once. It is a little too much, but I did find it fun. Restricted area? I don't care. I'm hopping over. Just kidding. Never do that. It's not funny at all. God. How was it? It was bashing crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> what was better, this or the Timberwolf? I would say this, the Prowler, was better. Oh, dang. Okay. Ride number 15, the Viking Voyager. This classic log flume ride gives a glimpse to the past of the Viking days. Feel the water's current propel hollow logs through a winding path toward new discoveries. Not all journeys include smooth sailing, so be ready for a dramatic drop. If I would have read that before going on the ride, I probably would have been 10 times more excited. Classic family ride is what I would call it. But I remember while we were walking through, each ride has like a rating of one to five of how scary it is. And this was a four, which it should be like a two. Yeah, I guess that is that drop. But, but like, I swear that. it's like, this is like a ride that anyone can go on, right? Like you could bring a, your little baby on it breastfeeding. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, you could drop the baby, but other than that. Ah! Oh, oh, that was a bad. I would say it was a four out of five. Yeah, I'll do that too. Ride 16. No, this is actually ride two. We're going back to Spinning Dragons. We decided this time, <laughs> even though the line, is, the, the line is the same amount as it was when we came, let's just bail the annoyingness and do it. Yeah, it was literally the exact same amount of longness. But yeah, by this point, we were used to waiting in lines. It's not even... Plus, most of the rides had no lines. So like, waiting on one line is fine. While waiting in line, I actually saw some puke. Which I feel like was from someone being overheated. I guess if you had to decide if it was someone overheated, someone hungover, or somebody with like 
COVID, who would it be? I'm gonna say overheated. Yeah, I'd say the same. Same with me. This line was pretty eventful because I also got bullied. Yeah, by 10 year olds, I'm guessing? Yeah, I wouldn't consider it bullying as the victim, but some would say I did. you did get bullied and you should get help for getting bullied because you probably have trauma from it. Um, guy just cut breathing on my neck. I know, I, I mean, did you notice that while we were there waiting in these lines that like, these annoying as like kids, they like do these things where like, they're not really bullying people, but like I saw them do it to other people too, where like they just do stuff to impress their friends. Oh yeah. It, so like they'll like, go so like close that. up to somebody's neck. So their friend lasts. This ride was pretty fun. Not even that fun actually, but it was pretty <laughs> fun. Like it gets to a point with these theme parks where I actually love these rides and stuff, but after a while it's like, I've already met my standards of like adrenaline and shit. So like, it's not gonna get any higher on that unless I do some drugs, which I wasn't doing drugs that day, so. Um, while we were on this ride, I looked over and I, and I saw Lucas filming it, filming <laughs> us, and it actually looked so creepy. Like if the, the people in the couch, cause we were with other people, me and Ethan, if they saw you filming, they would have been like, what the fuck is this dude doing? This is someone with glasses and a hat filming like at the ride. It's like, boo boo, what are you gonna do with this footage? You had your hand in your pants? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Ride number 16, Psych! We're going back to number three, The Patriot, because it's not broken down and janky anymore. Yeah, um, it was open. They they said, who cares if it's gonna break? Let people go on it. I'm joking. <laughs> they, I'm assuming it was actually safety. It was actually safe. It was fun. What I realized is that when I'm on these roller coasters, I always just sing to myself. I was singing this- Wait, really? Yeah. I was just singing this song. This Charlie XCX song. Oh, you're singing that as you're Hot going girl. down like the ride? Yeah, it's just fun. It was more of just no, like you actually singing should... added to the experience. Oh like, yeah. Cause when you're on a roller coaster, like you're doing like superhuman <laughs> things basically. So it added to the superhumanness of the situation. How was it? Gosh. I can't believe Michael Jackson has that in his backyard. Oh, did I... have it in his backyard. I know, that's, that's crazy. Wait, he actually did? Well, he had Neverlands, same thing. Ride 17. They have been the bamboozle. This was opened in 1977 and it's a zero gravity fail ride. So it was basically, this ride has basically been there the whole entire time that Worlds of Fun has been open. It basically is like one of those spaceship rides at the fair where you get sucked to the wall, except this one is open air and it also tilts as you go on it. I do think it's funny because Lucas went on this ride, but if you guys saw this ride, it looks old because it's like 50 years old. Like some of the paint rusted. Yeah, it's just funny that Lucas went on this ride but didn't go on the roller coasters. And this isn't me yeah. making fun of him. Like we just you know, point out the ironic, ironicy, if that's a word of it. Irony. I, oh, irony of it. Oh, these rides are so much fun to me though, because like, I just love the feeling of getting stuck to a wall, you can't get off. I'm just stuck. I love it. Honestly, it goes down to like, I just like said that doesn't have buckles. But if you want to know why that is, it's because my moon sign is an Aquarius. So I don't like being tied down. <laughs> so I can't really go on rides where I'm tied down, you know? That's why I have to go on like these log rides and stuff because I'm not tied down since I'm a moon in Aquarius. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thanks for explaining it. If anyone else has their moon in Aquarius, like I'm assuming you do the same thing. After the ride, I actually felt food. Like in this area, I could feel some, I, I could tell that food had like moved up. Ew. But I didn't, I didn't puke though. Where are we trying to go? Because we'll, where are we? Americana. Um, we're right here. Oh, right over here. Alright, so we need to go. I think we're right there. Okay, let's let's start our journey. Ride 18. Autobahn. This is a classic bumper car ride, and I didn't understand why it was called Autobahn, but then I was like, this is in the Europe section of the park. I wouldn't even say the Europe section of the park. I would go as far to say like we were in Europe. Um, and I guess that means a German, <laughs> Austrian, or Swiss Expressway is what Autobahn I don't want to flex, but I didn't know what Autobahn was. Oh. Just because like, I always thought it was so cool because like, it's this one road where they can go so fucking fast, right? Like over hundred miles per hour. But I do have to say this ride did kind of suck. But I felt bad because in your notes you said it was fun. Oh, it was just very short. I don't know if like it's just because safety throughout the years, but they made you, you had to go in one direction. Like I remember bumper cars being a free for all. You can go, you can hit people head on. They said you can't hit people head on and also you have to go around a track and it's like, so was it a race or bumper cars? I hit some 50 year old guy and like he didn't even smile. It's like, 
of the game, just so you know. You know what I mean? I know. I don't have something against you, I promise. I saw everyone thinks, like, you have, you're have attacking them if you have a couple cars. It's like, nope. I just want to have fun. I want to hit you, but nice. I also wish they went a little bit faster. I totally agree with that statement. Ride 19. The taxi tour. <laughs> <laughs> That's offensive, actually. No, I guess you're being. I think it is. Basically, you just operate replicas of antique taxis. But the annoying thing is that you just said operate, but even though there's an illusion that you're operating the vehicle, like there's a steering wheel, you can move the steering wheel, our brother Ethan was driving and he tested out taunting, not taunting, and it's still taunted, so they actually just lied to us. The only thing that actually works is the accelerator, right? That actually. Connects. Yeah. We're driving in Europe. Ah! Ah! I've never been to Europe. Ah! He's driving on the other side of the road right now. Oh my god! I've been to Europe, but this is better. I remember thinking this was so cool as a kid, because like, back then you'd think it's so cool driving, and I was like, we're actually driving. But you actually aren't. It was fun though. Like I actually thought this was like a five out of five. I know. I would say that too. Like it isn't thrilling at all, and but it's just like fun to do, you know. I would never wait in line though, but there was no lines. But if there was like a twenty minute line for this, I would. Oh, have hated I would have been like, bitch. This is dumb as fuck. And I got my words of fun sippy cup. <laughs> Ride twenty. Kickin' Country. I didn't know they did this at Worlds of Fun, but they have shows. And you said they've always had shows, so I just wasn't aware yeah, of it. Yeah, I remember they used to have a mermaid show. Um, I did love the energy they gave. Because the audience, like we said, it was a pretty dead day at Worlds of Fun, so there wasn't that many people there, but they were still like, they are just performing, having a blast. And I love how there was so, there was like six people performing. It was honestly a great show. And we were only there for like five minutes, because we were like ready to leave the theme park, but still, it was like a good five minutes of fun. Yeah, I enjoyed their performance. Ride 21, characters. So we were about to leave the theme park, but then Lucas was like, do you want to hit carriage controls? And so. then we walked up to the girl and said, how much is it? And then she told us how much it was, and then at first, my first thought was, F that, I'm not spending $75, because it was $25 a person. But then I was like, oh, I might as well, actually. So then we went back, and she started drawing us up. And it was a little bit... Awkward, like just staring at her the whole time because you have to stare at her because she draws your face, but it was worth it. For some reason, it was so funny just looking into her eyes as she looked at me, and like it was just weird because she was like looking at you in a way that most people don't look at you because she was studying every feature. When we got the photo, <laughs> I thought it was a good, um, couch, couch, I thought it was good. Like, I don't see me looking like that, but that's the point of it. They did really good with Ethan, but this is what I love about. Um, getting your photo drawn is that like it's like seeing yourself in a different dimension, but the artist was so <laughs> nice she Yeah, was a darling and we loved her art. That's the conclusion of us at what's up fun We were hungry and we wanted Shake Shack because we haven't had Shake Shack in a while It was so good the cheese fries. <laughs> yeah, this video isn't really about Shake Shack, but it was really good yeah. We didn't well, eat any food at Worlds of Fun. No, yeah, because we had lunch before and like the lunch was so fucking filling. Bye, Bye Worlds of Worlds Fun. Of fun. See you another time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Worlds of Fun was a blast. Would do it again. Yeah, if you're within four hours of Worlds of Fun, obviously go visit it. It's a blast. That was our review. And now it's time for us to have a World of Fun. This afternoon! <laughs> Let's have a water oh, yeah, Let's do it! Bye! Bye!